morning. It's fine Monday morning. I hope you're all doing well and are ready to share a little bit into God's Word and uh, send you on your way today with some thoughts. So I have uh, my devotionals this week are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm going to kind of do a theme for all three days. And so uh, if you want to, if you've got your Bible or whatever, what we're going to be doing is looking into uh, some scriptures in the book of Ephesians in chapter 6. And you may be very familiar with these. It's talking about the whole armor of God. So I want to read them and then we'll just kind of go back and we'll, we'll talk about them on uh, today, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, the Apostle Paul here writes and he says in uh, chapter 6 of Ephesians and verse 11, okay, he says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high or heavenly places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked or evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay. Man, there's so much here. But I want you to understand, first of all, the context in which the Apostle Paul is urging us to take the whole armor of God. In verse 11, he says the reason. Put on the whole armor of God. See, we need, we need to put it on. A lot of children of God, you know, we, we all, as, as children of God, we have access uh, to many wonderful things promised, promised to us of God, but sometimes we don't put it on. We don't use it in our own defense. That's the reason. Put the armor of God on so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he explains how that we are in a war and the war is us and Satan, and Satan is coming at us as a child of God. He wants to destroy our lives. He wants to destroy our integrity. He wants to destroy our witness for Jesus Christ, so that when other people see us, they go, that's a Christian? I don't want it that. Whereas the opposite of a true, faithful, strong Christian is a great witness that people can look to and say, man, how and why does this person have a life that's able to, you know, uh, give them true peace and, and satisfaction and contentment in life regardless of what they're going through? So, you know, there's a big, big thing going on here and it's a war and it's a spiritual warfare. And God has given us the things that we need to be able to stand and not be destroyed in this spiritual warfare that we're, we're going through. And he says it again after explaining that spiritual warfare in verse 13. Take the whole armor of God so that you can withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You get the picture of a soldier in a battle and when the dust is settled from the battle and all the, you know, many, many people are, are lying, li lying down on the ground, dead, hurt, you know, dying or whatever, there's a soldier that's still standing with his sword in his hand, with the shield in his arm, with the breastplate on, the helmet on, all these things, they're still standing. They're still alive. They're still going. They did not die. They did not quit. They were not overcome. That's what God wants from us. He wants us to be the overcomer in life. And so he explains 
what the armor of, of God is. So we're going to take, there's six of them. Works out pretty good. We're going to take two each day, okay? So the first ones that he mentions is, um, uh, stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now that's the old King James. Basically, it was a big wide belt. Picture the Roman soldier, right? And the Roman soldier that was going to go into battle, this big white belt around his midsection, he would, he would tuck the skirt of his garment up into that so that he could run and not to get entangled, right? Um, and uh, before the actual fight, you know, his sword would be tucked in there. So it would gather all things together, readily available for him. Well, the Apostle Paul says that our belt is truth. It's truth. Boy, how precious is that? How precious is truth <laughs> in America in 2020? Obviously, we all know we're trying to survive this political season that we're in. And you know, they I just just last night, I, I as I'm recording this on a Friday, last night Thursday was the last presidential debate. And after the debate, all the talking heads get together, right? And many each news agency, what what's one of the things they always do? We need to fact check everything that was said by by both, you know, President Trump in this case and, and Joe Biden. Uh, so they got we're gonna fact check. And see, and guess what? You, you get these differences of opinions about the fact check. So I guess we need somebody to fact check the fact checkers. <laughs> I can't even hardly say it anymore. Truth. Where is the real, real truth? Man, it's such a precious commodity. Well, you know what? As children of God, we have the truth. We have the truth. We know the truth if you to any degree, are looking into God's Word. We have the truth, and it brings all things together so that we form the correct worldview, so we have the correct things in our life and in every aspect of it. We're believing the right things. We're living according to the right um, um, standards, if you want to, morals, if you want to use that word. The, the, our lifestyles are those that are conducive and that become a child of God, that are becoming to a child of God. It, it, it brings everything together because we have that truth. And the, with truth comes power. And that's one of the things that God has for us. And then he says, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness. How do we define that? One of the definitions is uprightness of character. Righteousness is uprightness of character. So that kind of gives us the idea, well, that's the way we're supposed to live, right? We're supposed to live a righteous life. Uh, I am supposed to live a righteous life, but when I look at me, I see myself tripping up and failing in that. Um, and so how do I build confidence how do I have this breastplate which covers the vital organs, my spiritual life? How do I have confidence that I have a righteousness that will not fail the arrows and the darts? How can I have that confidence? Well, the Apostle Paul told us how in, in Romans, the third chapter. I'm going to read this for you very quickly. Romans chapter 3. In verse 22, you know, he just been, he had just previous to that been talking about how that man in and of his own has nothing to offer God. All our, our righteousness, man's inherent righteousness apart from God is as filthy rags. There's none that is righteous, right? But he says in chapter three and verse 22, the righteousness of God, which is by faith, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no 
difference or no distinction. Primarily Jew, Gentile. So what did Paul tell us here? Our breastplate is not our righteousness. Our breastplate is God's righteousness that he freely gives to us when we believe in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. That righteousness does not fail. That righteousness withstands. That righteousness will cover our vital organs and will give us the victory. Now, we need all these things. We need truth. We need righteousness. And we need the other pieces of the, uh, the armor that we'll, we'll talk about uh, on Wednesday and Friday. I hope this gets you started good. And uh, you know, or get you started with a, a good day today. And we'll see you again Wednesday. God bless.